Good morning, everyone. My name is Maya, and on behalf of the youth ministry, we want to welcome you to Unity Fellowship Church Newark Sunday service. Happy Mother's Day, and may you all be blessed by our service today. Ashe. Good morning, church family. Um, I'm Samantha, and I'll be doing the opening prayer. Um, grateful and eternal Father, we come to you to say thank you. We want to thank you for keeping us and our family safe, and we pray that you continue to keep us safe. Pray that there's peace in the world, and all the mothers that died, that they watch over us, and amen. Happy Mother's Day to the mothers of Unity Fellowship Newark. Thank you for all your nurturing care and concerns and hope you have a happy Mother's Day and thank you for being part of Unity Fellowship Church from the Men's Committee. Thank you again and happy Mother's Day. Hello, I'd like to wish all the mothers of Unity Fellowship Church a happy and healthy Mother's Day. I love you and miss you. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy blessed Mother's Day to all the mothers of Unity Fellowship Church Newark. On this special day, even though every day is special, we say to you, congratulations, well done, and hope that your day will be very special. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day to all those who paved the way for other mothers to be here today. Happy Mother's Day to spiritual mothers. Happy Mother's Day to birth mothers. Happy Mother's Day to Gloria and Annetta Irby, my loving parents. I wish you Happy Mother's Day. Today we honor you, we love on you, and we celebrate you. Happy Mother's Day. So I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to the mothers of Unity Fellowship Church in Newark. I hope you have a great day. We appreciate you and honor you. Happy Mother's Day, mothers of Unity Fellowship. You are so appreciated. Thank you for all you've done and all you continue to do. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the queens of Unity Fellowship Church, New Ark. The men are so mad that we are together this time of year to serve you all as you should be served every day. Thank you for the ways you love us, that you lift us, that you keep cover, carry, and comfort us. Happy Mother's Day. I know that we aren't in the times that we wish we were, but we're still here. We're still able. So we, 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 we got a dinner with your name on it, Queen. We're going to do it. We Happy Mother's Day. With me to the 23rd song. The pastor in for 20 years. And Every once in a while, a line from the 23rd Psalms like screams out to me. And I know it was screaming because you'll see between what I preach this week and what Pastor Jerry preaches next week, God is screaming about 
us diving in. Hello, somebody. The 23rd Psalm, you know it. You probably don't need to turn to it, but do it with me anyway. So I'm going to, for purposes that will make sense as we move through it, do both the NIV version and the King James version. Got it? Let's go. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Is the verse, is the line. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. King James Version. Let's go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table, uh, a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen. Why is the 23rd Psalm so revered, so respected, and so referenced so many times? Because of David, the shepherd who was uttering the peace, also came into the kingdom as a shepherd. So he's being walked through a prayer that walks him through his work and his work. God is meeting him at his level. Somebody hear that? He's meeting him at his level. He's speaking to him through his own language and meeting him at a place where he could work out the process that God is trying to get him to understand. Like I'm trying to get you to see solidly and certainly, surely and without doubt or reproach that you are being blessed by me and will continue to be. Today's sermon title, y'all, you can't drown in your overflow. Somebody say that with me. You cannot drown in your overflow. You can't drown in your overflow. But let's go back into this whole thing so that you can see why you're struggling, that there is an explanation for your elevation. Because sometimes this whole thing is about unworthiness. We get timid when God needs us to be triumphant. Don't get disconnected in a dis don't get disconnected in a disjointed journey and miss your dissatisfied joy. Hello, somebody, because joy didn't show up when you want it, as you want it, through whom you want it. Huh? Don't let the adjective make you block the noun. Huh? So when things seem to be going too well, we start to look for what the enemy is cooking up to embarrass us and set us up, huh? Because we don't feel worthy of being set apart. Hello, somebody. But Hmm? The person, somebody say it with me, but the person who is dismantling your joy is the one who is also doing this destruction. It's you, it's you, it's us. Because we think of the idea of the cup overflowing. When we start to talk about overflow, when we start to live in overflow, we start to call up lack. And as Dr. Marshall, Wash, uh, Marshall Williams said, the enemy, enemy, the enemy, enemy is the one who starts to make Overflow not make any sense because overflow seems like it overwhelms. Overflow seems like it's overdue. And you think you've messed up something to make it to ensure that all of it doesn't come to you. But we gotta, in order to get to Psalms 23, five, and those four words or three, if it's my cup overflows or my cup runneth over. Sometimes that can make no sense to us based on the circumstance we're in, based on the stuff we still hold against ourselves, based on the pain, based on the past, based on the fact that every time a new thing comes up, two old things come up too. Hello, somebody. And we got to get through the work of understanding what it means to dismantle this stuff so the 23rd Psalm makes sense. And so by the time your cup overflows, you understand how you got here. Somebody hear me? You understand how you got here. The work you put in, the wailing you put in, the, 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 the worship and the wonder that you put in in order to finally, freely, fully get to overflow. I wish somebody could hear me. The person un that, that is doing the destruction is also doing the dismantling because it doesn't make any sense for us to be set apart when only, the only thing we're used to is a setup. And sometimes we're the one who perpetrates the setup, sabotage, making sure we don't ever get to great, making sure we don't ever get to get to love so that we're right, making sure that we don't ever get promoted, making sure that a thing can't ever be because the story we are in is a story we know. And this is the devil. This is the devil we're used to. Anybody? Any? But the enemy, enemy, 
Uh, you know, one thing doing nothing. It's the one in the house. But let's unpack this. Can we? Can we? See, God is taking all the pieces and parts and pains and preparations and procrastination and piddling and pains and pondering and making something new out of your scraps. See, we want to show up perfect and solid and whole and right and righteous and all the stuff that we say it's supposed to look like. And God says, I'm trying to use the scrap. I'm trying to make you understand that I love all your pieces and all your parts. I love your pieces and all your parts. Hello, somebody. When I first heard that, it just made my whole soul delight. But hopefully it can work for you right now. Hear me? God said, I'm trying to make something new out of your scraps. And surely the people who turn chitlins and neck bones and chicken backs and oxtails and pork shoulder and macaroni of cheese, that macaroni and cheese that's so delicious because you use all the slices and slivers from the fancy cheese tray in the main room and took it in the back room and melted it. And so you had some gouda, some cheddar, and some longhorn in there, and they weren't supposed to congregate together. But when you put them together with that roux that you made to put together that, ma that macaroni and cheese in your house, it feels like something from heaven because you didn't toss that out the scraps. You made use of them. You made so full of them. You fulfilled a whole new dynasty, destiny, in being able to see something out of the pieces and the parts that somebody else would have thrown away. Somebody hear me? Somebody hear me. That's how you get to overflow. You make use of all the stuff instead of wondering. I'm going to get there in a minute. Stop. Listen, listen, listen. He says, so I'm, try, I'm trying to get you to see that just like you rewrote, reworked scrap, uh, scraps and made it soul food, I'm trying to reshape your life out of the pieces and the parts. And I know you want it to be one whole thing, but I'm trying to make a whole a, a thing whole. I know you want it to be one whole thing, uh, but God told me to say, I'm trying to make a thing whole. Anybody hear me? Even, uh, even in these times and all this fear and all this failing, somebody can see that we are in a wilderness experience right now. And God is trying to get us to take last May and last June and bring it to last September and this April and make a new thing because you made it through all those things and you're still standing. And somewhere in there is the lesson and the blessing of you seeing how solid you are, how sound your mind is, how willing you are to, to meditate or take the steps to make sure you keep your righteous mind and your, 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 your right body, even if it got a little more weight on it, that you're willing to see that God has been working on something for you in this season with all the pieces and the parts and you thought it had crumbled, huh? But the truth is, somebody hear me, the truth is the journey you are on right now, the journey that you are in the midst of right now is how you understand that this isn't some external thing that comes to you. It is lessons and learning and life and blessings and peace and power that pull up in you, that fill up in you till you get to the point of full. And then you get to overflow. I wish somebody could hear me. You can't drown in your overflow because you earned all the pieces and the parts and the prayers of the thing that kept covered and comfort you, comforted you to get you right here. Somebody here, you know you're full. You know you're full because of all that you made it through. After all you've been doing, you have gotten to a place of full. Sometimes in the midst of it all, you, you burst into tears and sometimes you think it's lost and sometimes you know it's not. You know that it's my soul looks back and wondered how I got over. Somebody hear me? And the truth is, you've been full a couple of times in the midst of this journey. You've been full a couple of times in the midst of this life. You've been full a couple of times in the midst of all you've been through. You've been full a couple of times in spite of the fact that you tried to sabotage. You've been full a couple of times and I want you to hear me tell you right now and you kept on eating. Hello, somebody? You know you've been full. You know you've been thankful. And something, something on the inside told you, I know you feel like it's too much, but keep eating. Keep eating because I'm trying to get you to understand the experience and the expression of overflow. Somebody hear me? You keep eating because dessert looks so divine and delectable. You keep eating because those yams have a yes, Lord, on them. You keep eating because you say, I don't normally eat greens, Lord, but it's something about the way you do what you're doing in this moment that makes me keep on eating. And I stand still and I stay here and I eat to overflow. Anybody ever had to unfasten your restraints in order to keep eating? Hello, somebody. That sometimes you you just know you pushed it too hard, but you might not ever get another meal like this. And you unfashion the things that constrain you. Hello, somebody. Unbuckle the, th unbuckle the things that try to harness you and hold you in. That is your 
overflow and you can't drown in your overflow because you've already been set up to endure it. You've already been set up to understand it. You've already been, un you've set up to unpack it. What I know today is that God didn't bring you this far to leave you. So that does that. So that means you cannot drown in your overflow. You cannot be consumed by God. Huh? You can't be so overwhelmed that God, that you've missed that God keeps on doing great things for you, huh? You, you can't get weary in well-doing because it's due season and you prom the word promises you would reap a harvest, huh? That means you got to be full and stay hungry. Somebody hear me? You got to be full and stay hungry, huh? You cannot drown. You can fly, but you cannot drown. You can leap, but you cannot drown. You can get full, but you cannot drown in your overflow. So let's unpack this whole thing again, huh? Because there's some things in this thing that we miss. Hello, somebody. It's some things in this thing we miss. Somebody with me? Because the, 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 the NIV version says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Hello, somebody, huh? That is a present tense declaration. So no matter what it is that you're going through, no matter what is in your bank account, no matter what it is you're suffering, presently, you lack nothing. However, somebody say however, the King James Version says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Shall not is future tense. So one version is covering you right now, and the other one has covered you into the future. So God said, it's impossible for you to let me lead for you to follow me and ever think you need anything because either you lack for nothing or you understand you ain't never going to lack for anything in both cases because guess what tomorrow when you tomorrow it's your present huh huh so he covered tomorrow your, your present in your future when you hit your future it's your present this might make somebody say it's been but i want you to get it if you can't get the i shall lack for nothing because you're worried about tomorrow then lack nothing today and get to tomorrow so that tomorrow is today hello somebody so he says, wherever you get, I got, huh? Wherever you get to, I got you, boo, huh? That's what I need you to hear from God. So you can't drown in your overflow because I'm going to cover you. Even when you think you can't swim, even when you think you're dunking and drowning, I got you because I'm going to pull you up and go breathe. Now go back in. I know it's a lot. Breathe and go back in. Huh? It's like that baptism moment. Breathe. Oh my God, I ain't never Then go back in because I want you to get baptized consistently, covered and kept and clear that I got you now, tomorrow, and forevermore. Anybody? Anybody. I'm almost through. I ain't gonna step in here a long time because this was just too easy for people. I just hey, I just came to give it to you. You cause me to pause in green pasture because it says you make me lie down. And to make is to, to allow a thing or to cause a thing to happen, right? So what is happening in that moment is that it God is saying that even when it seems like things are unsettling, even when you feel like things are unsure, I will tell you, I know you feel like you got a rush. I know you feel like you got, a, I know you got a lot of kids, but I need you to stop right now and breathe in the green pasture. I need you to crack the windows and take in the fresh air. I need you to put on some music and enjoy the long way home. I need you to understand that in order to do all the things I got for you, I am going to cause you to pause, hello somebody, in green pastures, to take it all in, to go out and sit in your backyard, to not hear your phone ring and they'll know they'll all be all right, to do a thing that allows you to be replenished and renewed and restored. Anybody, 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 let's walk back through this thing. And he said, I'm able, huh? I'm able to chill by still waters, huh? I want to talk to y'all as God talked to me, right? Because he talked to David where David was, right? He gave him that, that shepherd metaphor. He making me lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside still water. Why God made you go that way? That, that thing was in your way that made you take that other way. You go, ooh, I didn't even, ooh. And the next thing you know, you just pull over and park. The next thing you know, your song come on the radio. The Lord said, I'm just trying to get you to slow down because I got things for you that you're going to miss if you keep rushing. Uh, if you keep pushing and pressing, thinking that I'm doing that to you, God is trying to get me to, mm -mm, God said, I'm not trying to, do, 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 do. even after, after Jesus did every main thing, he said, y'all go ahead, let me spend some time with that, let me spend some time centered, let me slow down, let me be still, let me cover myself, because there's going to come a point when the word's going to get real raw, real right, real ready, and so while I can, huh, as I can, I'm going to chill beside still water, anybody, I'm just trying to get you to take care of yourself, anybody, there is a newness, huh, he says, there is this newness, this refresh, you, ref you refresh my soul, you restore my soul, you replenish my soul. Just in the times of need, there come moments where you sit on a Saturday and almost look at your phone like something's wrong because it's not ringing. And God said, wait, you told me you needed some time. So if the right movie came on the TV and the wrong people stopped calling you, why you complain? What's happening? I don't understand what's happening. Don't call their name because then they're going to call you because that's how energy works. So if you don't want people to just shh, shh. But where my church? Shh, shh, shh. But I'm gonna check on them because they. Shh, shh, shh. If they make it for one day without needing me, shh, shh. 
Make it through one day when I'm can I can I have, shh, 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 shh. why are you calling me for money on the third and you got paid on the first? That's I'm trying to get you to stop always drawing stuff to you because your worth is in your work. See this refreshing today? This thing that allows you to be in the shower for longer than, the thing that allows you to go to the mall and be quiet, the thing that allows you to sit in the backyard and no forward, the thing that allows you for your doorbell not to ring, it's you and your wife chilling in the backyard holding hands, the thing that allows you to be still and know that I got you. You pay for that, you pray for that. Anybody, anybody, it ain't gonna check my blog, I promise you. Listen, listen. I'm making better choices through conversations with you, huh? <laughs> I'm making better choices. You're leading me besides the, what, is it, what does it say? What does it say? It says, it, it says in, 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 in its sweetest version, it says, he, he guides me along the right path for his namesake. And even, he guides me along the right path for his namesake. I'm, metabate, I'm making better choices in you, with you. I'm making better choices for me. I'm considering me better, differently, fully, freely, right? Right? I just want you to see all of these parts so overflow don't make sense, so that overflow don't overwhelm. Hello? Hello? Step by step, I'm covering you, filling you up with grace and mercy and peace and power and hope and help. So when I start blessing you, you will already start with overflow because every thing is already so good, so great, so kept and covered that you understand making better choices. Oh, oh I got an extra. So, see, 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 see why your kids try to treat your extra money like extra because you do too. Extra $50, you got to have a pair of shoes. Extra $100, you buying something you don't need. And they go, well, you must not have to save. You must not have to keep something because every time mama get a little bit of extra, every time daddy get a little bit of extra, I look up and he done posted some new suit. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm talking about myself, right? And you go, hey, wait, wait. You're trying to get me to understand overflow, dad. You're trying to get me to understand surplus and grace and mercy. Let's have a conversation about being trading. That's what my son was like, son, do you have any? I'm learning trading. I've been doing it the last year, dad. And I would like you to support me. Oh, son, so see. You might not expect it based on the way you think I spent, but I've got some money saved away. So ha do a presentation for me so that I can understand whether or not I, I should invest in you. Because I got the money. You thought I might not have the money, but I got the money. Now talk to me about money. Talk to me about learning money. Talk to me about how you understood money so that I can make this new decision. Uh, uh, I can make a new decision about my future from right here. Anybody? I'm almost through. Hold on. Hold on. And it says, it, it, even though, huh, it, it makes me lie down, it, 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 yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though things ain't always been pretty, you got me. Your ride, your staff, your grace, your mercy, they comfort me. See, see, so I want us to get to the places of overflow so that we understand the times that we, of, of the things that we carry around like shame. Like the time you were doing something that you weren't supposed to and God came and got you. The thing that you almost did and grace and mercy rescued you. Even though, I almost let go. I almost went too deep. I almost said yes to the date. I almost said, huh? Almost went to, the ex wanted to talk again. And God said, if you trust me, don't do it. I know you think you forgave a long time ago. Just let it go. But I need closure. No, you don't. No, you don't. You want to look and see and see her and see if she see you the same way. You don't need closure. You need to close the door. Anybody? Anybody? Because sometimes closure is closing the door right? He said, yay though, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And we got to remember the times that we almost walked through the valley, that we did in fact walk through the valley, that we were stuck right in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death, huh? God said, chill, I'm right here. I will fear no evil because you're with me right here. How did I make it through? Because you were with me. I didn't have to hear your voice to call me out of it. I saw, I held your hand while you walked me through it, huh? But I looked back and I saw, wait, wait, wait. I thought I was making it through this hard. Why did God leave me? It's only one set of footprints. Hello, somebody. God goes, nope, that's me carrying you and you have it, huh? And you ain't have it because you, you ain't have it because you my child. Come on, baby. So you think you're heavy to God because somebody talked to you about gaining weight. You think you're heavy to God because somebody keeps reminding you about quarantine because you keep reminding yourself because you keep trying on that dress thinking, it's still snug. I mean, I'm eating like I used to eat and I ain't do nothing to lose no weight. I just wanted to be loose today. God said, either eat better and because you want to keep the dress and lose some weight or put the dress back on the hanger until you've done some work or buy a new dress. But uh, come here, baby. Come, come here. Just get, come on. Let daddy rock it. Let mama hold you because you're killing yourself thinking things supposed to change without you making change, right? Uh, 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 and I'm with you. I got you. Y'all, I'm almost through. I, I, I promise I am. And then, then it says, uh, uh, when madness come, you tell me to sit down and eat. And while I'm doing it, you anoint my head with oil. Anybody understand that? Huh? You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. It's like, God, why would you do that? Why don't I run when my enemies show up? Because if you run when your enemy shows up, 
but your enemy don't know I got you. Your enemy doesn't know that you're kept covered and comforted. Your enemy don't know that you're good. Your enemy don't know that that $50 they didn't give you back didn't break you. Your enemy doesn't know that even though they talked about you behind your back, that I could. The enemy knows that even though they invite you to the party, if I don't show you, no, you ain't come to the party. Oh, I meant to invite you. Well, I was good. I was in here stopping, you know, a little ham, a little fat back, a little, little, little piece of steak, some chicken, some, some greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes. So God had me covered. I know. And I know. I know you wanted to think that while wow, you were doing that over there, that I, I was going without. But God prepared a table for me in your sight because you were talking about me and God wanted to give you something to talk about. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. I just want somebody to receive that while you believe that. Anybody? Anybody. Why? Why? Why is this thing happening? Why does the thing like the devil? That's what's up. Why does the thing like while I'm doing this, this other thing comes up? God said, because I need them to bear witness to the change in you. Huh? I need them to bear witness. Now you handle it like, a, like you prayed about handling it. Don't go back. Don't cuss like you used to cuss. Don't do the thing like you used to do. Handle it like you handle now so that they can say, wow, I thought you was going to cuss me. I thought you was going to cut me. I thought we was going back to 1940. No, brother, you might still be there, but I'm here, kept covered and comforted by the blood. I'm here, wrapped in the arms of a loving God. I'm here, walking and working and, wake, and, and waking up with God by my side. Hear me, anybody hear me? Anybody hear me? Anybody hear me? So if you understand all that, when you get to this point where it says my cup, run it over my cup overflows all of that that you endured before that is supposed to make you understand how you can't drown in your overflow and help you understand how you got to overflow because you might not have in the bank what you want you might not have in your bed who you want but you're not going to rebuke and bankrupt your overflow you're not going to miss the fact that you got health and strength a little money in the pocket, and bills are paid. You're not going to miss that you could get up and go get something from the refrigerator and eat well. You're not going to miss that your blood pressure may not be perfect, but it's not where it used to be. Your sugar may not be perfect, but it's not where it used to be. Your cholesterol may not be perfect, but it's not where it used to be. Your house may not be perfect, but it's not what it used to be. Your waist is not perfect, but it's not what it used to be. Your head ain't always clear, but it's not what it used to be. That's how you got the overflow. And where you should be swimming and stroking and grace and mercy, the enemy will get in your mind and make you think you finna drown. I can't handle all this at the same time. Kids coming this way, job coming this way, and it just seems like I'm going to lose my mind. And God goes, let's go in. Because you can't drown in your overflow. Up above your head is all the grace and mercy and peace and power you need. And if you understand how you got here, if you, you understand that Psalm 23 is the explanation for your elevation. How did I get here? How are we talking about overflow in the middle of a pandemic? Because all the dead people be quiet. How can I talk about overflow? Because we're talking about coming out of this. And God said, you don't think I'm bringing you out of this the same way. You don't think I got a new job for you, some new mercy for you, some new peace, some new power, a new investment, a new direction, a new relationship, a new hope, a new help, a new building, a new blessing. If you don't think that, then, then you're going to keep trying to tread water, thinking, I don't know how I'm getting out of this. I just might drown. But God says, if you throw your head back and float on, then you'll understand you can't drown in your overflow. Hello, somebody. You can't drown in grace and mercy and peace and power. You can't drown because what's the last line? Don't miss the last one. It says, surely uh, your goodness and your love will follow me. Here it is again. Will follow me. There's future chance. That means God got you today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Surely your goodness and mercy, surely your grace and mercy, surely everything you got for me will follow me. That's future. That's future. That's future. It reminds you you're covered today and it overwhelms you in the overflow because God talking about 2022 and you are not. God's thinking about days ahead and you are not because you're panicked and just God said, I said pandemic, not panic. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. But it brought up some panic. It brought up some pain. It brought up some past. It says, but surely huh, your love and your mercy, surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days, all the days, all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because, you know, uh, we, we, we have to own for how long and how many times we just packed an overnight bag for the Lord. Hello, somebody. How many times we just brought, took a toothbrush to the Lord. Sometimes we just had a drawer at the Lord's house. And the Lord said, if you want to not drown in your overflow, I need you to move in. There is not just a room in the mansion for you. There's a whole mansion with your name on it. Hello, somebody. And when you get that, 
when you get that, you'll realize that you cannot drown in your overflow. And surely, I wish somebody would hear that, surely. I wish somebody understood that, 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 that from the context of English language, that surely means with a pointed certainty. Anybody? With a pointed certainty. So how can you ever drown if all you got to do is check your neck? Huh? All you got to do is throw your head, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. And God goes, you're drowning, you're drowning. Throw your head up. <gasps> oh, why did I almost drown? Because you, somebody told you to pray with your head bowed. But then they say praise with your head bowed. Look to the hills where your help come from. Where does your help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And you do it that way. And you can't drown in God's grace and mercy. So that means you can't drown in your overflow. That means you got to get used to overflow, which means somebody got to get ready for overflow. And then you got to get comfortable with, um, with overflow. Then you got to get uncomfortable with overflow. I wish somebody could hear me. I wish you would let a check come through and a cash app. I wish you would watch God do a thing and then do another thing. You think God is trying to get you comfortable with grace and mercy? God is trying to get you uncomfortable with grace and mercy. So that things keep happening and people come forgiven and blessings fall down and grace and mercy and for overflow. And yesterday, people like Saturday, I'm so mad, it's raining. God said, don't you remember? You put a seed in the ground. Let it rain. Shout about rain. Stay in the house and wave your hand and be like, whoo, whoo. I could go to work all week and while I'm resting, you, you water my plant. Come on, God, how you do that? How you do that? Because I want you to get without a doubt that you cannot drown in your overflow. You cannot drown. My cup runs over. My cup overflows. It scares us. It scares us because there's shame and oh, I wasted it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Because when your cup overflows, it flows on your children. It falls on your house. It falls on your parents. Somebody don't realize you can water up. Oh, you don't realize that, that you can bless us, that you are the blessing of your mother and your grandfather. You don't understand that God is using you to break the curses in the family, to stay in there looking at me. They always talking about me. They show up and you thinking about the public conversation they have about you on the porch. You should hear the private ones they have on you about you in the Zoom calls that they don't invite you to. Who is he? What is she doing? How is he bishop? How did she get here? How was she minister? Who made her executive director? How are they still standing? How come she ain't dead yet? They having that meeting about you right now. You think they're at church. They on a call about you. They're mesmerized about the fact that you're still up and you're still able, that you're still standing and you're still saved because you're saved and rescued. I wish somebody would hear me. I'm glad about the times that the Lord came and got me at church. That's in the moments where peace and power met me at the altar. That's salvation for me. Rescued is where I was nowhere near where I was supposed to be. And God still came to get me. Anybody? Anybody. You can't drown in overflow. And that's what scares your enemy. Because now you know God. You know God, huh? Even in a drunken state of undoing, you would say, Lord, God, there, it is. there it is. I just needed you to call my name, huh? That's it, huh? God will throw the switch when I call your name. Anybody know that song make too much? The, the, God told me to tell somebody, lift up your hands or your gates and the king of glory shall come in. And the truth is, if your hand's up and it feels like you're overwhelmed, and God still got eyes on you, you can't get lost. It feels like there's water over your head, but your hands are up. God goes, there's my baby. Boom, I'm sending more. Boom, and more. Boom, and then some. I know, I know it's overwhelming because you're supposed to be dead because of what you've done. You're supposed to be in prison because of what you've done. You're supposed to be hated for what you've done. You're supposed to be disrespected, disregarded for what you've done. And God keeps on doing great things. Why? Because you cannot drown in your overflow. And overflow, I wish somebody could hear me, overflow is how God gets the dirt out the cup. If you turn the water on on a filthy cup and let it run and keep running, somebody keep running and, and keep running. Hello. Keep running. The brown turns beige and the beige turns clear. I wish somebody could hear. And the red from the Kool-Aid turns pink and the pink turns clear. Hello, somebody. The yellow from the orange juice is orange and yellow and then clear. I wish somebody could hear. If you let yourself be overwhelmed by overflow, huh? the devil come a point where it comes forth as pure gold. And you got to get uncomfortable with it because the water going to keep flowing and keep flowing. And God said, keep going and keep going. And you thinking I'm going to drown. God said, you shall live and not die. Now go back in. <gasps> Lift up your head, O ye gates, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty, Captain of the ba the battlefield, King of Israel. Huh? Huh? I want somebody to say this. To me. I can't drown. I can't drown in my overflow. But thank God I can rejoice. Hush, I can't drown in my overflow, but I thank God. My feet might be underwater. You know, if you've ever done water aerobics, your feet can't shout like they used to. But you can still wave your hands. Huh? You can still cry out. Huh? I, want, I want a bubble to come to the rise to the top. And somebody go, is he drowning? Glory. Oh, I guess not. You can't drown in your overflow. Stop being afraid of it. Get ready to get to, 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 get to it. And then allow yourself to be overwhelmed by it. 
by it. Overflow ain't supposed to overwhelm, but somebody knew they overdo, so get over it, huh? Let God bless you. God, let, let, let God do what God came to do. Come out of this pandemic in such a way that it blows your mind. Forget other people. It blows your mind. Walk like you can't believe you made it. Walk like you don't understand how you got up. Walk like you can't believe you made it through. Walk like, wait, for all of the maladies in me, how did I not get sick? That person was healthy and got COVID. How did I not, when I got asthma and bronchitis, and how did I, how, 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 how? how? Because that time he led me huh, on the path. That time he said, shh, go over there. I listened. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. That even when I was hard-headed and hard-hearted, you whispered soft enough to get up under my anger, to get past my pain. And I was like, all right, Lord. All right, let me just go this way. And I ended up in the park and then just pulled over and sat. Watched a squirrel run up a tree. <laughs> Watch a bird chirp. And I'm like, okay, I guess I should go now. No, not yet. All right, then. Mm -hmm. And I turned on the radio, and out of nowhere, they was playing a Mahalia, Jack Tremaine, Hawkins, Kirk Franklin, Jonathan McReynolds song. I said, well, let me listen to the song. Then another song came up. Next time, it was an hour later. And I said, you can go home now. And whatever was trying to meet you at the house, had time to get away. Hello, somebody. And sitting still seemed overwhelming because you wanted to run in like a first responder. Hello, somebody. God said, but where you aren't, I already am. Uh, where you are not, I already am. Lift up your hands. Gracious and eternal Lord God. You're my shepherd, and I lack nothing, or I understand that I will never lack anything again. I shall not want covers me in the future. I shall not want. I wish somebody could say, I shall never want. I wish somebody, oh, I wish somebody would just trust God enough to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall never want to believe that and to receive that, to say the way you walk me and work me, the way you steal me and stop me, the way you prepare a table before my enemies. So I'm thinking I'm supposed to be there to show off and I'm just supposed to be putting in more food for the seasons that are to come so that when I think I lack, I can't have gut, I can't have gut fat and lack. I, I wish somebody could hear that. I can't have gut fat and lack. I can't do that. I can't have eaten well. Uh, I might not have eaten right sometimes. Hello, somebody. But I thank you, Lord, that I eat well. Uh, and, and, and I understand to, Hey, that no matter what you are with me, you got me covered. Rod and staff, they cover, comfort, and keep me. And no matter what is going on, no matter how pretty it is or is not, huh? That you're always with me. And I understand today that while I'm going through it, you have the nerve, the mitigated grace to sit me still and then anoint my head with oil. The Iran said, sure, huh? huh? So, then you said, you anoint my head with oil, my cup. Runs over. Sure, huh? surely, certainly, absolutely, clearly, divinely. Huh? Your kindness, your grace, your mercy, your goodness, they will keep covering and comfort me for all the days of my life. Because, Lord, huh? I no longer have bags at your house. I live with you. I no longer have stuff at your house trying to live with you. Can't serve two masters, can't live in two houses, huh? Uh, uh, my, my things, huh? Uh huh? My things might be in this house, but my stuff, glory to God, I know. my stuff is at your house. All my pain, my past, my hope, my health, my hope, my hurt, all of that's at your house. So the stuff I need, the stuff I want is here. The stuff I need is at your house. Glory to God. And I will dwell with you forever. Forever, ever, forever, ever. And that is why without one doubt, while we screaming, we shout that we keep on trusting. For your word is true. You've already done what you said you would do. Ashe, amen. And so it is. Somebody clap your hands. Hey, I saw all of you. Wow. You can't drown in your overflow. Know it. Flow it. Show it. You. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor Kevin. Thank you so much for that word. Yes, Lord God, we are overflowing. We are being carried through the word of God, Lord God. We will not drown. We will not drown in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. And it is offering time, Lord God. We ask that you give with your whole heart, Lord God. There is nothing too small, Lord God. Because when you're giving with your heart, Lord God, you're giving with all of you. Lord God, we thank you. And um, you can please give to PayPal me at USC New Art, or you could do Cash App at US the dollar sign USCN. We thank you for all you do. We thank you for all you do. We thank you for the houses and for the love that we give to all of us and to give back to you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We love you in Jesus' name. And happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and all the caregivers and all the lovers. We love you and take care. And thank you for all you do. Peace and blessings.
If you missed that, I'll repeat it again. It is USC Newark at PayPal and is dollar sign UFCN for Cash App. We love you. Peace. Awarded church family, let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, we come together to say thank you. I would like to thank you for the beautiful woman who made it possible for us to be here today. Thank you, God, for Zoom and making a, making a way for us to still connect. Thank you for helping our parents with keeping a roof over our heads. Thank you, God, for school and giving children the best education to your ability. I know who you could be, God. Make yourself known for the people that don't. You are our king. I only know you to be great. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you for keeping us alive. Thank you for watching over us and leading us down the positive path. Thank you for walking with the people who need help. Thank you for helping people who are sick be well again. Dear Lord, I'm asking you on this day to be here for the people who don't have their moms. Help them know what their mother is. Help them know that their mother is with them and will forever be with them. Please, Lord, show them a sign, a breeze in the air, a special bird, a feather, or a penny. Send them something so they know that their mother is with them, and so, you, so are you. Last but not least, please bless all of the mothers, soon-to-be mothers, mothers who lost their child, stepmothers, foster mothers, pet mothers, grandmothers, and anyone else who plays the role of a mother. Thank you, God, for all you do and all you've done. Ashe, amen, and so it is. Thank you, church family. Have a great Mother's Day. My, 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 my. Thank you, Kiara. That was beautiful. That was somebody, awesome, Kiara. Awesome. So I see we have company today, so I will not do closing remarks. Bishop Harris Thomas, if you could come forth and uh, close us out with some words, we would surely appreciate it. And to all the mothers, I see you, Mother Sylvia. I'm going to call you. I see you. I see you, uh, Mother Norm. I see you, uh, Mother Lynn, I see you, Mother Do. I see you. I see you, those who mother, Mother Cheryl, Mother Victoria. I'm going to use that title with the reverence with which you know I carry it. Mother, mother is a crown, a crown jewel in this, in this community. And so to each of the mothers, Mother, Mother Vitalia, Mother Beatrice, Mother Aisha, uh, Mother Justine, Mother Jacqueline, Mother, 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 Mother Jeanette, Mother, to Mother, to Mother Buddy, to each of you, to Mother Starlet, to Mother, to the mothers, to Mother Gloria, Mother Netta, to Mother Jade, to the mothers who mother and let them love. Thank you. And I'm saying that to those I see. I'll say it over Facebook, <laughs> see, but to all of you, thank you. Thank you for your light and your life. Mother L and to Mother Bonnie. Give Mother Bonnie some of my love. <laughs> Go ahead, good Bishop. Bishop, you have to, un you have to, you're, you're, you have to, um, to mute. Amen, amen, amen. I take, you know, I love the fact of Zoom because it don't make a difference where you are, how far you are. It gives you an opportunity just to drop in and just say hi and hello and all. I thank and praise God for all of the mothers and those that have stepped in to be mothers and all for all that you've done uh, for each. I, I thank God for those that have mothered me and all that has been a blessing. Some, sometimes, you know, my mom has passed, but there's that one somebody that always step in and just make me feel good. I, I, somebody asked me earlier, they said, what do you remember about your mother? And I said, I remember the beatings. You know, I remember the time that mama, a man took that, what we used to call it a cat nine tail. You know, mama would lay that on us and they would get into a place where mama would even remind us, uh, I'm not mad at your clothes, so take them off. You know, so I remember a hey, my mama, you know, so many different ways. I thank and praise God for her. You know, I thank God for the message, you know, because, um, you know, Elder, I, I, I tell you, you really touched me in the part that I was able to grab hold to. I almost started to break out and cry because you brought up something that God saved us where we are in the situations that, that, that we were in. And I remember, I don't know whether you know it or not, but you know, the place, but I remember being down on P Street Beach. I remember going down into that well behind the Supreme Court just to pick up a piece, you know. But if it had not been for God, 
meeting me in those places that I, I, I shouldn't have been if it had not been for the overflow of God's love, his great and his mercy if it had not been for the overflow that followed me down into those places, God knows I don't know where I would be. I would probably be dead because somebody could have met me there with a shotgun, could have met me there with a gun, could have done all of these things, but through God's straight gates and God's mercy. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Amen. I'm not going to take up a lot of your time, but I just felt that I just felt that overflow. I just felt, you know, actually felt it going not only out of the club and, and running down the table and running on down the floor. And, you know, and as it went down to the table, if you were down there, you just cut whatever. And, and uh, the one man said the crumbs. Amen. I just thank God almighty. You know, I, and I'm not going to hold you long. So but I do want to say thank you for all that you have done and are doing. And uh, Elder Taylor, you have been a blessing to me from day one. I, I, I can't I can just wait until I am like you. I want to grow up to be like you. <laughs> Amen. I, I said that when I bet you I want to grow up to be like you. So thank God for you. Thank God for all of you and for your mothers and for your mother, 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 wherever you fall in line. God bless you and may heaven continue to small, smile on you. Let us get ready to pray and go in. I'm doing benediction, right? You know, so as we get ready to go, we ask you to just, just think on your mother. Think on that mother, that person who was the mothering of your life whether they're here, whether they are gone, whatever they transition, realize they may not be with us in the physical plane, but their spirit is always with us. The spirit never leaves. The spirit is right there. So think on that right now as we get ready to leave out of this church service. Do you ever, ever, ever leave the spirit of mom that is always surrounding us, no matter where we are, that spirit is there, eternal and everlasting creator God. Lord, we thank you for this another day. We thank you for the message and the messenger bearer. Thank you, God, for this family, our family that has come together to connect, whether it's through Zoom, whether they're looking at this later or on Facebook, wherever it is. God, we realize it was your goodness, it was your mercy that brought us together. Lord, I'm asking right now that you bless mothers near and far. Thanks to God that have transitioned. The Lord, bless right now the spirit of the feminine energy that dwells even within us. We thank you for it. We bless you right now. Continue to bless us. Continue as we lift up our hands and give praises and glory to honor. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray and thank God. Amen.